Now for this night.
してるからなこの2000年の人もそばに乗って倒してしまうこのこの今手を打って倒してしまう He's a king of kings, he's a lord of lords He's a lord of my God He's the one that will let you up this way He's the one that started you in your way He's the one that took breath in your body
come here on the ass of this time? What did you come here today for? Uh, did you come here to meet God? Or did you just come here wanting to ask Him for something? Because that's a bad relationship when it's just one-sided. How about share the whole shit out? Study. It's bad when you lie to yourself. What did you come here for? We, 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 we look past the small things that are maybe simple to us. I know this is going to sound crazy, but how many did you wake up or did you get up on your own? How many did you keep all week? By lifting up hands, how many have children? Did he keep your child? With all the foolishness that's going on in the world? And you mean to tell me that you can come into the house of the Lord and you not give him what's due? Something ought to be wrong with you. Yeah. So right here, when I tell you to lift your hands and lift your voice, you ought to open your mouth and give God what's due him. If you're trying to find out how to develop a relationship, you can suck that phrase. So, right here, open your mouth and give God glory. Tell him that you love him. Tell him thank you. Tell him how much he means to you. Simply tell him, Lord, you didn't have to wake me up, but I'm so glad you did. Lord, you didn't have to take my children, but I'm so glad you did.
I do not have bread, only a handful of flour in a bin, and a little oil in a jar. And I, I'm sorry, and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from its first and bring it to me and afterward make some of yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day of the Lord sends, sends rain on the earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he, her household, ate for many days. The bin of the flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And below, you're out the door. If you're 15 and below, you're out the door. If you're 15 and below, and you know you got to go. If you're 15 and below, you got to go. Look at True. His birthday coming up. I need y'all to donate to my drum set fund. <laughs> Bless the Lord. All right, the uh, title of this message is Don't Let Your Natural Reality Outrule Your Supernatural Destiny. Don't let your natural reality outrule your spiritual, supernatural, spiritual destiny. In this text, we continue to witness the move of God and Elijah's journey of faith. The Lord said to Elijah, arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. See, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. Now, as I'm reading and studying this, I'm learning more and more about the character of God. He was instructing Elijah to travel to uh, the home and territory of Jezebel and visit a widow to provide for him. I am sure he traveled with a sense of confidence because he had heard the powerful words the Lord recently spoke to him. I have commanded. Now we know that command means to give authoritative order. A few synonyms uh, means administer, conduct, or direct. So in my mind, Elijah is expecting for the Gentile woman, a widow to be waiting to serve him. The Lord just demonstrated his faithfulness to provide provision. Surely this would be rather a painless visit. If God can feed him with the birds, surely he can send them to the widow's house to give him provision there. So it should be painless for Elijah as he arrives. Uh, so he arrives to Zarephath and quickly realizes that the Lord didn't just send him to a widow's house. He sent Elijah to the poorest a poor widow's house. It wasn't like she was sitting on several amounts of insurance money after her husband had died. This widow was at the lowest of the lowest. So Elijah arrives there and he gets to this widow's house and finds out that she is living in poverty. And so I'm sure Elijah is thinking, Father, how in the world is this woman going to give me something when she doesn't have much of anything? So he's there, he's being obedient, uh, and he is saying to her, he says, woman, listen, uh, let, me, let me get some provision from you. So let's set this backdrop. He arrives to the woman's house, and she is outside gathering sticks to prepare what she perceives to be her and her son's last meal. She doesn't even have wood to cook the meal, and the Lord has sent Elijah there for provision. My Lord, Father, you want me to travel to the enemy's camp, visit the poor woman, and ask for some food. Let me say this again. God was sending Elijah to the enemy's camp to go to the poor woman's house and ask her for something that he does not see in his natural, my Lord. He's at this woman's house. He's in Jezebel's backyard. 
God, and God wants him to ask for provision. Uh -huh. uh, you want me to go to Jezebel's house, my enemy's place, uh, to her city, and go to the widow poor lady's house and get some food. What is happening here, God? Well, what is happening is that God will command a thing that reality will attempt to come against. God will command a thing that reality will come up against. When reality tries to set in, God will set up. Hear me. The reality of the matter is that the woman did not have enough. However, God commanded that it be so. He says, go to this woman's house and she will provide for you. Uh, Elijah did not have time to allow reality to set in his mind. However, he had to trust the command of God. What is reality? I'm glad that you all are asking this morning. The definition states that reality is the world or the state of things as they actually exist as opposed to an idealistic, characterized, and unrealistic idea of them. Elijah was placed in a position where his faith constantly needed pruning and testing. Elijah is going somewhere to get something that ain't even there. God is saying that I have you in a season and your reality tells you that there is not enough. Your reality tells you that you don't have no help. Your reality tells you that there's no way and God is going to make a way. Elijah stepped into a place where his reality could have got him caught up. Uh, I need y'all to get this. Uh, ima imagine y'all ever been to a poor, poor uh, neighborhood where it was the poor, the, the police said, yeah, the poorest of the poorest. Now imagine you are in the midst of a famine where there is no provision there and God is sending you to this place where the poorest of the poorest living and they waiting on their EBT card. They're waiting on some food to be dropped off. mindset. God had to prune him from a thing. This wasn't going to be a quick visit. However, the Lord explained to him that he would dwell there. Uh, it's getting worse by the minute. He says, go there. And the text says, it says, uh, uh, he says, arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Which means that this wasn't going to be a quick knock, knock, a piece of bread and some water. You was going to be there for a while. <laughs> he commanded Elijah to go and dwell at this woman's house until further notice. Now, biblically speaking, dwell means to live in a place or in a particular way. Who am I talking to today? God has commanded you to dwell in a place where he can meet you. Dwelling in the Lord would accommodate your faith in an out of season. Dwelling in the Lord would uh, command you and allow you to accommodate your faith. See, when you don't have faith and you dwell in God, when you dwell in God, he dwells in you. And when he dwells in you, you can accommodate your faith where there is lack thereof. Who am I talking to when you dwell and sit in a place of God? Come on, he will change. Elijah was required to dwell in a place of lack thereof. His reality of his living conditions predicted that he was set up for failure. However, his faith proclaimed that God was in the midst of it all. You all should be jumping right there that the reality of the matter is that Elijah did not have nor did the widow. Elijah had nothing and neither did she. The reality of the matter is that Elijah walked in faith in an unrealistic way. He showed up like he was going to Ruth, Chris. He showed up like he was showing up for a Thanksgiving spread. He showed up like this woman was waiting on him. He showed up expecting huh, a thing. He had made up his 
his mind that if God sent him there, he would provide. He had made up his mind that the reality of the matter did not match the power of the omnipotent God. My Lord, the reality does not match God's power. And so he had made up his mind that he will shift and go into the direction of God. See, if many of you would dare to dwell in the temple of the Lord, he will get your reality together real quick. The reality of the matter is your assignment you ain't even qualified for. The reality of the matter is everybody don't like you. The reality of the matter is, come on, Satan is trying to take you out, but the supernatural power of God will take over, take your reality. The reality of the matter, Hosea, the reality of the matter did not match up. If you decided today that you will tuck yourself away from all of the distractions and the noise and truly seek God, I'm sure he will provide provision in your famine of your faith. There are some believers that are famine in their faith that God keeps telling you that you're going to go from glory to glory, that God keeps telling you that he's going to make a way out of no way, that God keeps telling you that I'm sending you to a greater place, but the famine in your faith will allow your mind to go to a supernatural place that say, by all means, if God sent me, huh, it will be something there for me. There's famine in your faith. That's why you show up like a vagabond. Baby, I show up like I got a billion dollars in my purse everywhere I go. I want the best of the best. I was trying on fur coats before I could afford one. I said, listen here. Oh, here you come in, Elder J. I said, go ahead and put that on me. My husband said, you ain't got no money. I said, ma'am, ignore him uh, because guess what? My super, go ahead, fit me up real quick. My supernatural faith will take me places that my right now reality cannot find them. Come on, I'm a try it on. I'm a walk in it. I'm a look in the mirror in it. The act like it's already mine. Huh. My supernatural faith will upset the flesh every time. My, my supernatural faith, come on, will have people spectating about my life. My supernatural faith will go into a bank and turn it into a church. My supernatural faith, who am I talking to? Huh? Little Zion. My supernatural faith what had me walking around like Mrs. President, huh? Uh, my supernatural faith will do a thing that man cannot do. Uh, if you tuck yourself away from all of these distractions and noise and truly seek God, I am sure he will provide provision in the midst of your famine. I am sure if you learn how to dwell, you will learn how to listen. I am sure if you learn how to dwell in his presence, he will dwell in you. And you will go from fear to faith. You will go from religion to righteousness. You will go from unknowing to all-knowing. If you get to get there and sit down somewhere, God will dwell in you in such a way that man can do not a thing about it. He will stand up in you. Like never before, he will have you go to hell or sire what somebody think is a pit, and God will build it up like a palace. He will take you from glory to glory. Uh, and God is saying, if you will go get somewhere and sit down in the presence of the Lord, he will stand up in you. We have gotten so used to hopping from one place to another, from one relationship to another, from one marriage to another, from one friend to another, from one job to another, one church to another. And God is saying to tell you to go get somewhere and sit down. Constant moving, a movement without God's direction will bring constant chaos. Ah, constant movement without God's 
direction will bring constant chaos in your life. Constant chaos. You are not finishing something because you have not sat down long enough and waited on God. Constant. If you put a cake in the oven and you constantly, my husband said, you know there's a light on there that you flip the light on and you look in and you can see whether or not the cake has risen. But if you keep opening the door of the cake, what's going to happen? It's going to fall. If you keep going from uh, building to building, come on, a relationship to relationship, come on, business plan to business plan, without God's direction, what you going to do? You going to fall. And God is saying, I want you to get in this season and dwell in me so you can stand in my glory like never uh -huh. before. God had to train to move Elijah on his command. Elijah couldn't afford to make the wrong move in a critical season he was in. He could not afford to allow his reality to be the driver of his life. He could not afford to allow his right now to dictate his future. He could not afford to allow his lack thereof to dictate his mantle in his all he had to do is dwell in the place of God and allow God to tell him the story again. God says, I just want you to get in your prayer closet and when you cannot believe, say, Father, tell it to me again. You know how your child liked their favorite story that you used to read to them over and over again? Mommy and Daddy, tell me again. Read my favorite part again. Father, read my favorite Your infrastructure of your faith and your mind. 
God. He desires to keep you in the unknown place where fear outweighs faith. The enemy wants to create discomfort that would allow you to disconnect. God is saying to some of y'all, if you don't learn how to fight in the midst of your trial, you better stand up and you better do a one, two, and a uppercut. You better learn how to do spiritual warfare like never before. Don't you allow the devil to let you disconnect from the source and the provider. Don't you allow a little discomfort to disconnect you. Don't you allow it in the name. Uh-huh. Oh, Jesus. A little discomfort. Huh. And you running. Huh? You aborted the dream. Huh? You ain't never worked without not having no money. Huh? Then this ain't cut for you. Come on. Everybody want to be a business owner. But baby, if you ain't never been broke, you ain't going to know how to build. God says a little discomfort. Come on. It's going to build you. A little discomfort is going to allow you to ask God, tell me one more time. A little discomfort. It's going to help you. Yes, In the midst of it all. A little discomfort. Huh. It's going to make you look at it differently. Huh. If you ain't never ate a bread, a piece of toast that you used to have to put in the oven and put syrup on there. Come on. You ain't going to know how to enjoy a real fine course. Huh. If you don't know how to make a sandwich, come on, out of a few ingredients, baby. Huh, come on, you gonna pass some good things. Oh God, y'all up here praying for this type of man. Baby, let me just do a scan. Oh, that's good jeans right there. Come on, that's a good root right there. And you don't let this get in the way of this. Come on, God ain't gonna pass you on by. And y'all don't stop looking at these women.
will sit there to get natural food and provide a spiritual plate for the woman. Uh, it says in verse 12, so she said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have, where's my stuff? I do not have uh, bread. Only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son. Okay, just set that up there for me. And I need one person. Uh, come on up here. Hit the coral seeing that I see. Okay. Now, uh, okay, move quickly. The spirit moves fast. Thank you. Okay. There we go. No, a, a week we get them. There we go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Move quickly. Thank you. Okay. Hit the coral side. Now let me read this one more time. Hit the coral side that I say. She said, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. I only have a handful of flour. Get a handful for me. Okay. Now put it in there. Okay. She says, I only have a handful of flour. Hit the coral side. Okay. And then she says, and a little oil in the jar. Now you know what little means. Okay. Okay. That's it. All right. Give him something for his hands. All right. Hit the coral side. All right. And so I need y'all to get this in, in your in your mind. She says she has, is that a constant of a little? That is a little, right? She says, I only have uh, a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar and see, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare for myself and my son that we may eat and die. Now, God set this whole thing up. Uh, he goes to this woman in the hood, and she is gathering sticks. She ain't even got wood to light a, fly, uh, to light a fire. And this man of God shows up in his nice suit, and he shows up, and she's saying, you want me to do what, uh, prophet? He says, I, I want you to go get me some water and a morsel. And she says, listen, this is all I got for me and my son. This ain't a party of three, and it's barely a party of two. And so you want me to go do what with this? And he says, you can have a seat. He says, uh, how did I see it? He says, uh, uh, he says, go back and hit the coral side. Where am I at? Uh, uh, hit the coral side. He says, uh, hit the coral side. Hit the coral side. Do not fear, verse 13. Go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me and afterward make some for yourself and your son. You want me to take all that I have and go make you something. You just showed up on my door and you telling me to go bake this for you and then they'll feed me and my child next. Now anybody that knows a mother, they gonna make sure they kids eat. Who am I talking to? So he wants her to take very, this ain't even enough to coat a pan of nothing. He wanted her to take very little and go feed him first. My Lord. The widow knew the prophet was a believer. She says, as the Lord your God lives, she acknowledges that God was still alive. Yeah. Are you hearing me here? She lived in the very city where they worshiped a false god. However, she knew that God was still alive and well. Catch this. Come on, somebody. She knew that he was alive and well. The widow states her reality was she did not have, and however, she left the room for the unrealistic faith to show up. She says, 
I do not have bread, only this and that. Get my paper, it's gonna fall. God is saying, I want you to see what you have. You have just a little, a handful, a little bit of oil. But if you quit telling him what you don't have and take what you do have and go and do what he says, y'all have to stop getting to a place where you try to stack all the cards up for yourself and you better show up with the little that you have and say, Father, I only have this. However, I'm going to arise and go. Because if I give it to him, 
it opens my hand up to receive some more. But see, we want to hold on to what we call worldly security. And they ain't doing nothing but choking us. Come on, in our faith. And God is saying, open your hand and open your heart up to receive what I have. It's not at a conference. It's not in a book. It's not in the prophet so-and-so. It's between you and God. to the word of Elijah and she and he and her household ate for many days the bin of flour was not used up nor did the jar of oil run dry according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah cause see she stopped focusing on the provision she started focusing on the provider. So she kept using and pouring and she put it back in the cupboard. Come on. All right. She kept using and pouring and she put it back in the cupboard. She kept using and pouring and she put it back in the cupboard. She kept using and she was pouring and she put it back in the cupboard. She kept using, keep pouring and pouring and pouring and pouring. Oh. 
of it all. This woman was preparing to die and she was just getting ready to live. Who am I talking to today? Your reality may not be favorable, however your faith, there he is, is undeniable. Your reality, it may not be favorable right now, but it's going to take your faith that will deny your reality. I don't care how it's set up for you today, but if you just trust God and get to the place to dwell, he will create some things inside of you that will make other people uncomfortable. He will create uncommon faith, unshakable, unmovable faith like never before. So as I said to you, don't allow your natural reality to outrule your supernatural, come on, destiny. So destiny, destiny, destiny. In the Korosaya. In Basho Korosaya. Please stand. Now, before we take this, because I know y'all like to rip it open and eat it like a snack. In the Korosaya. If you need one, raise your hand. In the Korosaya. Now, what I'd like to do, uh, you going to tear mine up, Elton Jen? Okay. There we go. Now, before you take this, okay, we need a couple of them. You have the option to take it collectively with all of us, or you can take it privately. Who else needs one? Okay. So far. 
Father, we thank you that we shall be reminded why we're put here. Listen. That we should be reminded why we're on this earth and the assignments that we are in. But all we need is a little oil and a handful, Father. That you shall have your way in this season. That we shall get our portion, Father, and give whatever you want us to give in this lifetime. So have your way. Do what it is you need to do to every believer today, oh God. Don't you allow them to walk out the same way they walked in. But shift their faith. That's it. Shift it, Father. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name. So, Father, as we prepare our offering... To sow on this word. Allow us to prepare it in the right heart, the right mind. As you know, there are five different ways that you can give. It's on the back of the chair. The cash app, the simple gift. That's it. Yes. That's it. Text the give, the Venmo app. Or you can mail a strong check. Once you have your tithes and offering, please stand. That's it. Uh -huh. Give everyone a minute. Give a minute. Right. Say, freely I sow. By faith, I watch God. Make my harvest grow. Give up and tap it with your phone or with whatever you have.
but I can't speak for androids, but I know you can follow. Follow instructions as Pastor said in the message. I need you all to go to your calendar, calendar page. Go to your calendar page. And for Tuesday the 7th, we know that's election day, so please make sure you vote. That's one, but I'm not asking you to put that in. For all the men in here, I'm asking you to put down at 7 o'clock men's Bible study. We need you here. And we want all the men to come. And I know on Apple they have the alert to remind you 30 minutes before. So make sure you remind them. But for everybody else, that next day, November 8th, go ahead and put Bible study in. And we want you to put the same alert. And that is the church Bible study for Wednesday. So go ahead. I see you typing. Praise God. Make sure you put that alert for 30 minutes before. That'll give you a little time to get you some food. And come on ready for men's Bible study. We want to see you in the building. Lastly, uh, the music ministry can stay a few minutes after service. Minister Fred would like to speak with the music ministry after that. If all minds are clear, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace forever and ever. Let every heart say amen. 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 God bless you. We'll see you on Tuesday. Oh, yes.